Today, we are visiting what is, in my not-so-humble opinion, one of the most quaintly scenic cities in Germany, Gothenburg auf der Tauber. But this is not just any time of year, tis the Christmas season, when Rotenburg takes on a whole new dimension of enchantment and splendor. So let's see what adventures I find. Today, I'm visiting with my family, and our journey starts with lunch. Our first attempt to scout a lunch location fails miserably, as the chosen eatery does not serve lunch at all. A real danger in smaller towns like this. So keep that in mind when seeking out food in Germany, or anywhere else in Europe for that matter. Thankfully, we need only walk 100 meters down the street to find a restaurant, and one that has apparently found the resources to update its interiors into a more contemporary mien, the Zona, which is both an inn and a restaurant. The Zona offers hearty, traditional local fare, such as this lovely dish of bratwurst handmade by a local sausage maker on a bed of sauerkraut, accompanied by a tarragon mustard sauce and red cabbage braised with red wine and quince. This is gorgeous, and my sister is also the creative of Mutessa. <laughs> Please subscribe. Oh, please subscribe. Fish and chips. And then we've got pulled beef, Franconian longhorn <laughs> with wow. mashed sweet potatoes. And then this is the original Wiener Schnitzel a la Rotenburg Ob der Tauber with potato salad and fillets. Mm, very good. I cap off this delicious meal with the royal mint ice cream topped with whipped cream, unsweetened the way God intended. My baby niece Haven, a notorious flirt, is with us today. Hi. Hi. <laughs> nice. Not only is the Zona's food delicious and plentiful, but the service is amiable, genuine, and engaging. Our delightful and diligent waiter, Mr. Do, hails originally from Vietnam, but fell in love with Rotenburg to such an extent that he moved all the way to Germany to make a life within its medieval walls. Well, Having finally broken our fast at 2 in the afternoon, we strike out to explore. First stop, the medieval town square, which currently houses Rotenburg's famous Christmas market. But we must not forget to appreciate the views on the way there. Rotenburg is a rare gem, whose medieval and Renaissance architecture has been preserved mostly thanks to a rather tragic turn of events. Shortly after the French troops withdrew in 1631, Rotenburg was ravaged by the bubonic plague, and it never really recovered. Instead, it fell into obscurity, becoming an economic backwater without the financial resources to transform itself into a riot of rococo stucco and stone facades. Instead, the city retains its elaborate half-timber appeal. I think you can tell which one I prefer. And the town has its own festive market to mark the season. But here, it is called the Reitelismarkt, the Rider's Market. This evocative name refers to the legendary figure of a rider from ancient Teuton legend who tended the souls of the dead. However, by the Middle Ages, time had transformed the rider into a messenger who brings gifts to all people on earth. The Reitelismarkt sprawls through the squares and winding alleys of the beautiful city, offering traditional treats such as Feuerzangbola, flaming Christmas punch, and Glühwein, mold spiced wine, along with live musical entertainment such as this charming calliope playing with Chris Pringle. I find some interesting stalls here, such as this one, vending feather pens and distilled beverages tinted in alarming colors. But also, as this very homemade sign indicates, handmade artisanal items, such as soaps made of edible ingredients and handcrafted wooden implements. And of course, nothing says German Christmas time like traditional Scottish attire. This season is known in Germany as the dark time, and with good reason. The sun starts setting at about 3.30 p.m., which makes now the perfect time to get a dusk view of the medieval cityscape. And what better way to do so than by climbing the city hall's tallest tower? Because, you know, stairs. In an 1890 skirt, with bustle, petticoats and all. Yeah. A special experience. But the view certainly makes the trek up the non-OSHA stairs well worth the risk of life and limb. Well, back down the cunningly canted stairs and onward to find my sister. 
And it turns out that she is inside the church we viewed from above, the Jakobs Kirche. Built like most medieval churches across multiple centuries, this ode to German Gothic architecture impresses visitors in a way that modern style churches never will, in my absolutely not humble opinion. It is awe-inspiring in the original sense of that term. Far from being a scenic bystander, though, this church has witnessed serious history. In 1525, Florian Geyer, a leader of the Peasants' Revolt, stood in the West Chancel and recited the Twelve Articles of their movement. But for naught. Like most such revolts throughout history, it was brutally quashed by the wheels of power, leading ultimately to no profound change. But these looming walls also house great works by great artists, such as the Holy Blood Altarpiece by Riemenschneider, whose gift for excavating such sultry shapes in wood never fails to astound me. And of course, this absolutely stunning high altar, completed in 1466 by Friedrich Herlin, a pupil of the rightfully renowned van der Weyden. By the by, the term Gothic was created by snobbish Renaissance architects who wanted to cast aspersions on their predecessor's work and set themselves apart. Sort of in the same way the Romans thought themselves superior to the Goths, who eventually, well, <laughs> took over their legacy. Well, now my sister and I are going to explore the ramparts that ring this city. You know, while the temperatures drop and the melted snow slowly freezes into a slick coating. And while we flop around here a bit, remember to hit that like button and subscribe, and consider becoming a patron on Patreon to receive special perks and benefits. Link in the description. Well, back to your regularly scheduled Rotenburg. As always, don't forget to look up, especially true here in Rotenburg. This is Castle Tower, the tallest area in the city, and called so because it leads to what used to be the reason for the city's name, a castle made of red sandstone built in the 11th through 12th centuries, and then unfortunately destroyed by an earthquake in the 14th. But the memory remains, much the way that Farmer Smith's defunct barn is remembered in the directions that locals give. Anywho, this gatehouse served as the customs checkpoint for goods entering the city, and also the only entrance into the city at night. Well, we don't have all evening, so onward. My long skirts are just loving all of this semi-frozen slush. This time capsule is known as the City of Towers, which at a count of 42 seems like a reasonable, if unimaginative, moniker to me. These two iconic towers are, I don't know, towers 22 and 23 that we've seen? I don't know, we've lost count. Finally, we make it to the outside of the city walls for a truly splendid, if not somewhat haunting, view. Rotenburg is one of three cities in Germany that still has its entire medieval wall system intact measuring roughly 3.5 kilometers. It's one of my favorite walking routes in the world. Nighttime around these walls does, however, instill one with the sense that someone else is watching, someone who has been here for a very, very long time. Ascending into the ramparts is a special joy because these ramparts still have their wooden superstructures, giving one a sense of medieval defensive fortifications in their complete state. Yeah, I'm a major geek and proud of it. As irritating as hordes of tourists may be in the summer, one can certainly empathize with their desire to see such a time capsule as this city. Unlike Carcassonne, it has not been ruined by a Victorian's medieval fantasy. Looking at you, Violet le Duc. Speaking of Victorian fantasy, this lovely half-timber is actually part of the city's Museum of Crime and Punishment which features a host of implements, many of them created in the 19th century as counterfeits, to purvey to morbidly eager collectors of antique implements of pain. The Victorians had some issues. The quaint charm of this inn belays the history it has witnessed. In 1474, King Christian of Denmark met Emperor Friedrich III here in Rotenburg in order to be invested with the newly formed Duchy of Holstein. During the seven days of festivities, King Christian lodged here. Meanwhile, the court, servants, and retainers lodged in burghers' houses throughout the city, and apparently they had to set up 1,000 stalls to house all of the horses that carried people and goods to the city. Celebrations and ceremonies were held in this square here, 
with feasting, dancing, and tournaments. But this was not a jovial, light-hearted occasion like this delightful Christmas market. Indeed, like most royal medieval feasts, the balance of power was being clearly demarcated by the emperor, one of which the Danish king would have been fully cognizant. Like most historic sites in Europe, this stunning square has, however, also witnessed horror. Remember that peasants' revolt I mentioned? Yeah, well, Rotenberg shares in its brutal termination. For in this place, with these gorgeous buildings as silent sentinels, Count Casimir of Ansbach had 17 of the revolt's leaders executed, beheading them and leaving their decapitated corpses lying in the street for the whole day. Better than hanging and drawing, I suppose, but... Well, on that cheery note, time for a venerable German tradition, since at least the 1950s. Afternoon coffee and cake. Into the Ratstube to meet up with the family. Okay, yeah, I know, a bit of a mood whiplash, but really, would you expect me of all people to produce the usual sort of Christmas market content? Within the boisterous vaults of the cafe, I order an espresso macchiato and my sister a Glühwein mit Schuss, which means mulled spiced wine with a shot. In this case, rum. You know, to ensure that extra Christmas kick. The Ratstube is decorated adorably with antique sabers and rifles. I have never understood the desire to use weapons as decorative items. Family's drinking coffee and stuff with the and coffee. Stuff with the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, family! Anywho, after warming ourselves up with various forms of chemical assistance, we return to the market to find a giant brass band blowing merrily away. And what Franconian Christmas market experience would be complete without Schneebärchen? A pastry specialty made of short crust that can be flavored in a variety of ways. Powdered sugar, cinnamon, chocolate, marzipan. In fact, my family has been eating these for breakfast for most of our trip. On our way out of the city, we take in the views now that night has fully settled upon this enchanted place. Back outside the gates, there is time to walk one last part of the wall while my companions catch up. As serene as this scenario may be now, the historian in me never forgets that Gothenburg lay at the crux of the Thirty Years' War, and as such witnessed its fair share of violence. For instance, Allied and enemy troops were quartered here on multiple occasions. And sometimes, zany, perhaps even apocryphal history was made here as well. For instance, in 1631, Catholic League forces led by the Count of Tilly defeated Rotenborg in 1631, evicting the Swedish troops quartered there and taking control of the region. Legend has it that Tilly, enraged over the town's bitter resistance, ordered the immediate raising of the city, as well as the execution of four council members. However, shortly after issuing this command, the 71-year-old Aristo supposedly drank a gallon goblet of wine and swam upon the idea to spare the town if anyone could drain the same vessel in one draft. Well, not to be so shamed by a Belgo Frenchman, a former mayor of the town accepted the challenge and triumphed in a haze of wine, thus saving the town and the heads of the council members at the expense of his permanently scarred liver. Well, given the time, I would happily walk the three levels of Rotenberg's medieval city walls in their entirety, the moat, the ramparts, and the inside, even in my soggy Victorian skirt. In fact, I would like to return someday and use a map to ensure that I traverse every single tower, lane, close, and corridor. Unlike other tourist traps in Europe that now seem like plasticized shadows of their former selves, Rotenburg deserves its reputation as a destination, while also somehow managing to retain a certain level of authenticity as a place that real people actually live and act as a community. Well, auf Wiedersehen, Rotenburg. Bis zum nächsten Mal. What about you, dear viewer? Have you been to Rotenburg? What are your favorite parts? Let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, Merry Christmas all, and may your travels be creative. Eli is exploring his new felt hovel. <laughs>
or palace, depending on your standards, I guess. I don't know. He, he seems very unsure about it. Look, he's yeah. scratching. That's hey. making a little nest. Evidently, I need to dig out this corner right here. Yeah. Just, just right here. A little, a little larger. It's not quite large enough. 